Hello, Calculus Kids. Welcome back to another lesson in Calculus. We have a brand new unit coming up now and a new lesson, so let's get into this. We're talking about differential equations and how those model with various situations. So just as a reminder real quick, a differential equation is when we have something like a rate of change and it equals something. So if I had dy dx and it equals blah, 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 that is a differential equation. Now you also, we need to review this, proportionality. I'm hoping some point in pre-calculus or even before that, some kids cover this as early as middle school math, you've covered what a direct proportional relationship is and an inverse proportion. So if you didn't remember this, here's what it is. Directly proportional, sometimes all we do is we just say proportional. If you see proportional, it means directly proportional. You have If A is proportional to B, then A equals some constant times B. So it's like it has a coefficient. A equals B except that it's some factor of it. Okay, real simple, that's directly proportional. Inversely proportional, sometimes what we'll say instead is that it's the it's proportional to the reciprocal. So if you see that phrase, it means the same thing as inversely proportional. And A is inversely proportional to B when A equals K over B, or you might see it as this, A equals K times one over B. Sometimes it's written that way. And K again is just some constant. So it's K divided by B when it's inversely, it's K times B when it's just directly. Now that we've reviewed that, let's use it. First off, we've got here a rate of change of y with respect to x. So we're going to write a differential equation that describes this relationship. So we have dy dx equals, so let's, what is it? We have that it is proportional. It doesn't say what type of proportionality, so that just means direct. So if it's direct proportionality, it means we have k as our constant, and we're multiplying it by what? The product of t and the rate of change of w. So it's t times the rate of change of w with respect to x. So this whole thing, that is our differential equation. We have our constant, k, and then we have t times dw dx. Now this problem doesn't give any information on what t is, on what dw dx is. That doesn't matter. That's not what we're looking for. We're just trying to practice setting it up. That's all this is. Okay, let's do the next problem. And that says we have some force F of a spring on a trampoline is going to be related to the distance D it is stretched. Okay, so here we go. This is the important part. The rate of change of the quantity of F with respect to the distance D is inversely proportional. So there we've got that key inversely proportional to the natural logarithm of the distance D. And then we've got some more information here. Let's just start setting up our problem. So we've got the rate of change of F. So DF d what? It says respect to the distance d, so dd. <laughs> df dd is going to equal, it's inversely proportional, so I will have a fraction with a k on top. Or if you prefer, you could have said k times 1 over something. And what? It's proportional, inversely proportional to the natural logarithm of the distance. So we're going to have the natural logarithm of d. All right, there's the whole thing. Right? So now what's happening is we are given some more information. We're given the rate of change of F is three units per centimeter. So this thing here is going to be three. So let's say three equals. And then we don't know what K is. So I'll just put a K there still. But we know that the distance has been stretched 0.2 centimeters. So now let's say the natural log of 0.2. What this does is when we're given certain information, it allows us to solve for k. So if I multiply both sides by this natural log of 0.2, and I have my calculator in the background here that I already did this on, so I know what that answer is, negative 4.828 is approximately the value of k. So well, now that we know what k is, we can write a differential equation for this situation. So it's df dd, capital D, with respect to the distance, equals, and now I have my fraction, and there's my k of negative 4.828, and that's all over the natural log of the distance, d. And I could put that in parentheses if I want, natural log of d. So there is our differential equation that matches this situation, but in this one, we actually had to figure out what that constant was, the constant of proportionality. So sometimes you'll have that to figure out. All right, last problem. We have Mr. Bruss swimming in a straight line across the lake. Let's see, is this Mr. Bruss? He's jumping in the pool and he's swimming. Whoa, look at that, that is Mr. Bruss. Okay, cool. So his position from his starting point is given by P of T. P is his position. 
That's position. P is his position. You got to do that over and over again so kids don't get messed up with position, velocity, acceleration. So where T is measured in minutes since the start of his swim. Okay, so during the first 30 seconds, Mr. Bruss' acceleration is proportional to the cube root of time since the start of his swim. Holy cow, what is going on? Well, it says here acceleration. So how do we deal with acceleration? Acceleration is the second derivative of P. But we're not just going to write P double prime of T because that is not how we write differential equations. We have to use the Leibniz notation. So Leibniz notation will be this, D second. So it's the second derivative of P over dt squared. So it's with respect to time squared. That's the acceleration when we do that with position. So then we have what? We've got, uh, is it proportional or inverse, inversely? Yep, nope, it's proportional. So we've just got our k, and we don't know what k is for this problem. And we're going to times that by proportional to the cube root, cube root of time. So it is the cube root of time. And that is the answer. So there's a couple things I want to make sure you get from this problem. Leibniz notation here, that when you have something like velocity or acceleration of a function, you still have to use Leibniz notation and not just the function notation. And then when you say cube root or cubed, for example, this, if I say square, the square of t is just taking t and squaring it. If I say the square root, that is taking the square root of t. So just don't get those confused when you read them in a, in a little paragraph like that. Okay, that's everything. We've covered it all for this lesson. So hopefully this one will be a lot easier for you than some of the ones we've done. It should be pretty straightforward and you should be pretty successful with this one. So rock that mastery check and I will see you back in our next lesson.